welcome to Always Open. On today's show, we're going to be talking about forgiveness, and we have questions from our box of issues that you guys have submitted for us. On today's show, you got me, Barbara Dunkelman, as well as... Gavin Free. <laughs> Mr. Co. Mrs. Co. It's, that's bullshit. <laughs> Hi, no, Gavin. You got a rickety door. Yeah, Touch we're working on it. Might need some oil. Pay attention to it. It's, they don't it's, use the word. The maintenance man is coming. I don't know. They're bad here at this, <laughs> this diner. This it's because we're so good. never closed, so <laughs> they can never get in. I like time. this set much better than Off Topic. Ooh, way less wow. broken glass. Way less yelling. This Thank is chill. You. Yeah, we had Jeff on recently on the show, and when we were done, he goes, wait, that's it? And I'm like, yeah, we film it, and we're done. And he goes, man, I'm used to like three, four hours. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, I feel you. All right, guys, let's do our shot. Do Tyler, it. I'm going to do yours, because you're not drinking. You do mine. Why aren't you drinking? I had, uh, I had a long weekend. Duly noted. We'll talk about that maybe a little later. Yeah. I'm going to sip of that, though. I want you to try it. It's good. Mm, uh. <laughs> <laughs> Hell again, yeah. Uh, so this is called the Dirty Girl Scout shot, and it was submitted by Dominic T, and it has vodka, Kahlua, Baileys, and creme de menthe. Creme de menthe. So, enjoy. Thank you, Cheers. Dominic. Cheers, Tyler. Don't Cheers. shoot that coffee, though. I won't. Okay. This show has made me very, very good at shooting <laughs> Do you want a second things. One? No, I'm good. It's good. It's nice. It's like drinking... Um, Melted ice cream and booze. Yeah. Mm, yeah. So why did you make that noise? It's just booze at like midday. <laughs> <laughs> what was the name of that shot again? The Dirty Girl Scout. I don't think that's something Dirty I want to be <laughs> involved with at all. You don't want to put your mouth on it? No, I don't. I'm going to pass. Um, I used what to you say it like Dirty Girl Dirty. Scout. Dirty, Dirty Girl, Girl Scout. Scout. Do you want this I... badge or not? <laughs> I don't. I don't. No. Don't I would like to kids. do a series of videos where we give you different drinks and you review them just with grunts. Sort of like <laughs> noises. Mm, yes. How would you describe that one? Uh, mm, no. <laughs> <laughs> what are you drinking, Mario? What am I drinking? Yeah. Um, it's cranberry and Fireball. Ew. It it's tastes like licorice. It's not good. It's very Christmassy. I told I told Texas I wanted something Christmassy, and it's and it's good. It's, it's a little spicy. Fireball Christmassy. I don't know. It's I think cinnamon. it's cinnamon, right? Uh, cinnamon and cranberry. I feel like Fireball is like, I need to make a mistake mm. tonight. Mm. Absolutely. That's a wedding you know, drink like for sure. Yes. Like it's shooting really Fireball at a wedding, <laughs> looking for a bridesmaid. Did you, did you see um, someone put a GoPro at the at the end of a Fireball uh, bottle at a wedding and pass it around? Yeah, it did like two years ago. All right. Well. Oh, like it was just like a... Yeah. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. Wait, that's an old video? <laughs> Apparently. <laughs> Get yeah, shit on. Dick hole. Okay. <laughs> it's a lover's quarrel. It's okay. It is. Um, I did find out, though, that because of this show, I'm much better at shooting liquor than I ever was before in my life. Well, you don't even think about it anymore, right? Yeah, I don't even think about it. We went out. I saw this guy this past weekend, and... Thanks for the invite, by the way. Uh, whatever. You went out the afterwards, and, and I didn't even get an invite. I had to work, weasel my way in there. What? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> anyway, we, we met up randomly because we were both out... And we had tequila shots at like three in the afternoon. Mm. And do you not like tequila shots? Can't Ooh. do it anymore. Yeah. Why? It was rough. I just got too drunk on tequila. I just can't ever have it. Bad memories. I have a friend who got way too drunk on uh, Smirnoff Ice, Ew. and she can't even smell it now. Oh, see, it. I'd be fine with that though, because that doesn't really come up. But I feel like everyone's always like shoving tequila under me. I'm like, I just can't. <laughs> yeah, I, can't I feel like if you someone gave me a Smirnoff Ice, I'd be like, <laughs> all right, you can, you can keep that. <laughs> but if it like if you get too drunk on Smirnoff Ice and then throw up. All the Smirnoff eyes. Oh. Probably never want to put it back in your body. That's fair. Yeah. yeah. I think you'd be fucked up forever. That's a, that's like what I that's what I imagine people who are nineteen drink. Smirnoff ice. Smirnoff ice. That was but I don't you, know any like real adults who drink. You were year. nineteen. Is that what you drank when you were nineteen? Probably, yeah. Illegal. I mean, I never did any of that. We don't condone illegal drinking. Yeah. Well, this is Texas, you know. I was drinking like at fifteen. It's kind of like because you look like this. It's at par 15. for the course. Yeah. And you sounded so, like that. That like Natty Light. I don't know if you've ever drank Natty Light. They're no. not a sponsor, right? That beer fucking sucks. <laughs> 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 well, now they never will be. It's a like <laughs> this water from a East Texas swamp. Did you just confess to a crime? No, I, I've never committed a crime. <laughs> yeah. Ever. That'll be on a future show. Yes. We'll talk about that. What is drinking age in Canada? Uh, it depends. Some places it's 19, some places it's 18. Uh, really? Yeah. It's confusing. In um, Montreal, where I went to college, it was 18. Did you start drinking then? So it was like the my college campus had a bar in it. Oh, nice. Because if you're in college, you could drink, basically, because yeah. you're 18. Oh. 
Pretty sure it's 14, because that's what I did when I went to Montreal. And I tried to pick up a lady that looked like Rosie O'Donnell. I don't think it was, but... <laughs> Everyone has that exact same In that vein, yeah. 14-year-old kid trying to pick up a 40-year-old woman. That's it's cre more creepy my way than it would be for her to pick me up, wouldn't you say? Uh, no. No, I would We're not going to get into this. kind of creepy both ways, <laughs> regardless of how you look at it. Let's get to the show. Yeah, let's do uh, <laughs> So we're going to do a little icebreaker called Most Likely To. Um, this is a game where we pull up prompts of different scenarios, and we vote on which of our guests are most likely to do what. We have one of every name, including ourselves, because sometimes we like to vote for ourselves. Why not? So let's get started with our first prompt. Ooh. All right, okay. who's most likely to punch another player if they could get away with it? Hmm. Oh. All right. Ready? Ready. Three, two, one. Ooh. Oh, two Merrills. One Gavin, one Tyler. You voted for yourself, and you voted for Mariel? Yeah. yeah. Why Mariel? Why do you think she'd punch? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I voted because I know I would hit Tyler. She and, has hit me and before. And I hit him all the time. Many a time. But uh, you voted for yourself too, Tyler. I think I've hit people. I, I don't remember, but I imagine I have in the past. I didn't vote for you because I, I feel like everyone would think by looking at you that you'd be a punchy kind of guy, but you're actually a very gentle soul. I am, oh. I am. I would never hurt <clears throat> anybody. And Mariel, you look like you want to punch me quite a lot, I would say. <laughs> I want to punch everyone, I think. That's just Mariel's kind of gaze. Uh, She's, yeah, it's, not, it's, not, it's not like a sex, it's just like a, she wants to fucking Yeah. <laughs> the thing I like what you do is that when you squint, the bottoms of your eyes go up. <laughs> like, so the top's going down. You squint upwards? Yeah. <laughs> now I'm going to be so self-conscious about my squint. <laughs> no, it's great. It's my favorite thing you do. Oh, um, thanks, Barb. I voted for Gavin because he punches me all the time. Not in like a bad way, but just like right before a show, he'll just he'll do this and just punch me. For I feel no like reason. I mainly punch your phone, and well, more than yeah. you. Usually, I I, it's, I punch you. It's because I follow through your phone. True. Mm. You got a lot of videos of me just there. going right at it. I have an actual I have an actual video. Maybe I can give it to. Yeah. Um, do you ever play this game? Uh, I, I have been known to play it. Yeah. I, I was doing the circle under the table. Like if you look down yeah. at my leg right now. I know. Okay, fuck I'm not you. going to. Everyone who's my you're, peripheral. You're a seasoned pro. You, I might have done it there. if you hadn't ruined my my fireball yeah. thing. Don't right. you think that framing is really nice? <laughs> What's wrong with that? <laughs> All right, never mind. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I didn't even see what you were doing. Does it work through a screen? Like if I look at the screen, I think I see so. It? I think that counts. Yeah, it's right? bullshit. I was just looking at you. Y'all just lost the game. Oh, I was like, Barb, what are you commenting on? Yeah, you know who does you know who does this all the time? Adam Ellis. He doesn't every, like every time I see him, he does He shouldn't that. do that. He's too, he could he's, kill someone. Yeah. But he's the gentle giant at Rooster Teeth. He really he is. is. He, he would never hurt. He's the sweetest Also, man. very, very funny. Very, Underrated very funny. funny man. Yes. All right, the next one is, who's most likely to try any food offered? Oh, I know this one. Oh, I know this one too. All right. Three, okay. two, one. Oh. oh. An even split. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Why Tyler? Um, he's a fucking trash can. Like, I see, like we'll go out to dinner. Literally and stuff. figuratively. Yeah, and he'll yes. like he'll yes. eat. Like here, here's a, a. The only thing left on my plate is a fourth of a tomato that I didn't finish, and he'll pick it up and he'll eat it. Um, I've never met a food that I haven't yeah. ate. I've never. I'm not picky at all. I have eat you everything. met many foods? I have met many, many foods. Been to many places and had things I don't even know the names <laughs> of them. Yep. You know, like when the chef comes out. This is annoying. Like, I appreciate your craft. I really do. When people put the passion into it, I want. that's great that you, you're telling me about sure. it. Sure. When I'm at a fancy restaurant, it's like, this is made with the finest of, of you know, ducks. We <laughs> feed them and we pet them every day. Finest and of ducks. slowly <laughs> chop off their heads and squeeze out the innards. Like, and they're telling you all of these things about the food and all the spice. I don't fucking care. <laughs> I feel like... Put the right. goddamn food in front. I'm going to eat it. I care about how it's made. Would anybody, like, because I wonder the rationale behind that. It's like, I don't need to know how it's made. Because if you told me, and I'm like, wait, that one, what was that one thing you said? No, I <laughs> take this back. Yeah. I'm not going to eat this now. No, was just that, put was the, that put organic the goat foam that you yeah, mentioned? Yes, it was, yeah. <laughs> like, just put the... Get, just See, put it down and let me eat it. Let I'm, me like, eat it. I'm similar to you in the sense I eat everything. And you probably know that. Like, mm -hmm. I like all food. I always eat probably too much food for the situation, and then I have a stomach ache, and I just, like, I'm like a five-year-old. Um, but I actually like hearing about how stuff is made and like what goes into it, because That's then fair. it's like, oh wow, like all these different ingredients make up this really cool dish, and it tastes this way because of that. I think Tyler's just a hungry, impatient boy, and he likes when his- he I got a problem. He just wants to eat. There was one time we, um, 
we went to San Antonio and we stopped by my great aunt's house and like any good Mexican aunt, she we were like, okay, cool, like this is just a quick visit. And she's like, no, you will sit down and you will eat. Oh. And we feasted and you were like, what did we eat? Like, what was that? Gu guayaba, <laughs> guayaba. It was something like that. I don't know. I sat down there like uh, you know, with her family. They didn't speak English. Yep. And I'm just sitting there, white guy, just smiling, just, <laughs> just, eating just saying like gracias, but saying it like softly because I was nervous. <laughs> You didn't want to like sound stupid. I didn't want to sound yeah. stupid. That was me in Italy the whole time. Yeah. I was yeah. like, grazie. Oh. Yeah. Um, <laughs> this is a different loop. What's that? What's oh, Kevin, what, what is this? <laughs> what the fuck is this? I guess <laughs> we never noticed that Gavin was in the shot. That's so crazy. Kevin, what are you doing in there? <laughs> what the, what the I fuck I legitimately was on? so confused just now. I think that was a prank that you guys pulled on us. <laughs> At first, I was like, oh shit, we're using the wrong footage. Oh man. Did what? you know you were there? <laughs> I did. <laughs> I had no idea, no, actually. By far the most effort I've ever gone to for like a two second joke. That was, you did that on purpose? I went downtown <laughs> last night and I shot that. Oh my god. I took a screenshot. I was like, where did they shoot that intro? And I tried to find that exact spot. <laughs> That, that's amazing. Tip oh. of the cap. Jesus. I was panicking at first because I was like, fuck, like, I know they're having issues with the video before. It was all a lie. It was all a, it was all a setup. <laughs> you fuckers. Oh, that was yeah. amazing. That was oh. worth it. I'm happy that I noticed it. That was worth it. <laughs> it was worth it, yeah. Okay. <laughs> that was awesome. That was really good. I'm so impressed. Man, that was a good I time. did a few versions. I wanted to pop up and look at where I was going to be, but I didn't know where I was going to sit, so I thought it was too risky. Uh. I still <laughs> I thought it was like an alternate timeline Gavin who traveled <laughs> here and didn't know what was going on. Because it's the exact same. Yeah. Like At first I was like, did they take a green screen video of Gavin and put it on our video? <laughs> what <laughs> happened? No, what it was is once we asked Gavin to be on, he messaged me and he was like, hey, can we do this thing? And I was like, I'm pretty sure we can. So I messaged Peyton and then they got it together. Yeah, they made it happen. Super easy. That it might have been better if we had just had not addressed it. <laughs> I, didn't really, I really wanted to Just maybe looked at it and just like got back to the combo and like just. Well, she just, tried. Like, she looked at it and she was like, huh. Well, I was doing something. Uh, so I was like, should I keep thing. the conversation going or should I stop? Because and then you're like, the wrong wait, footage. what are you doing? In that? <laughs> <laughs> it was like, do you. Okay, uh, quick little tangent, but do you remember the time when you were Skyping Bernie and I was Skyping Joel? And, I do. And so this was like before yeah, Gavin and I worked at Rooster Teeth and I was Skyping Joel about something and he was on Skype with Bernie in like a different room. And I was packing for some trip I was going on. So like I had my computer open and I was packing over here and I was talking to Joel, blah, blah, blah. And then I put my stuff down and I turned to my computer and Gavin is there, <laughs> like in his home in London or wherever. Yeah. And uh, there was a moment of just, did I, <laughs> did I end my call with Joel and call Gavin accidentally at some point? Because what Bernie had done is he put his computer on top of Joel's computer, so our cameras were like facing oh. each other. So I, I saw think we had like a two-minute conversation too. Yeah, the, the most wasteful channel of data <laughs> through the world. Just <laughs> skyping each other. Does that fuck me up? Good. That, that was always, that's a good prank. It's always weird when you, when you're expecting something, and it's different, but it's not unpleasant. Like, do you ever get yeah. if you take a drink or something and you're expecting one drink and it's another one? Yeah. Even if it's a nice drink, it's like, whoa! It's yep. just shocking to your system because your brain is not like orange juice and milk. Yeah, like yeah. something's not quite right. Yeah, it's you go for a swig of orange juice and it's milk, and it's just like, I like milk just fine, but not in this context. <laughs> not right now. All right, let's do one more. Okay. Even though they probably took it away. Who's most like? Oh, right, read it though. Who's most likely to make a bet where loser has to do something <laughs> embarrassing? I oh, mean, <laughs> that's like your whole MO. Yeah. Kevin, what is with you in the bets? I just think it makes nice content. Yeah? Yeah. I do. Well, I used to do it. Everyone always thinks I'm just like an idiot with money. I'm just like flinging money about. But there would be times where I worked at Waitrose, a UK supermarket. I made like £3.93 an hour. And I would like sometimes it would be a lunch and I'd be like, how much for you to eat? Like a cup full of all the condiments, just like someone I work with. So it'd be like ketchup, mustard, mayo, salad cream. Just keep doing that motion. All the dressings. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and then I'd be like, yeah, I bet you like 40 quid. And then they would do it, and I'd be like, well, that's more money than I'm gonna make today at work. <laughs> it wasn't worth it at all. Yeah. I just can't help it. I just like, just get bored. <laughs> well, now we gotta do one before the show's over. Yeah, oh, God. Yeah. We gotta figure out one. something. During the show. Mm. Maybe the crew can figure out something too. Mm. Y'all aren't doing anything. I do admire that though because it makes things interesting. I feel like it's a nice way to 
feature people too. Yeah. Like if someone's new to a group like and they just Jeremy, do like right? a yeah, like make make Jeremy a bunch of funny shit. Like yeah. gummy bears or something. Yeah. What did and he it, eat that day on the Let's Play Live? I think it was something gummy. Gummy bears. But the thing is, it it like for, from an audience point of view, it makes them like like that person, mm -hmm. and it makes me a piece of shit. Yeah. <laughs> I'm always a fan of. You're, you're fine with it. It's point. funny because it's kind of similar um, to how I started doing more things on free play with Meg because she dared me. She was like, "I'll bet you forty dollars you can't." Eat this like thing of sugar, and it was like um, Sour Patch Kids. Oh, that was in, like, oh I remember that. Yeah. And it was a bunch of like crumbs and like <laughs> sugar particles left over, and everyone's dirty hands had been in it. Well, I assume also she probably got that from yeah, Gavin. No, <laughs> you were the you were the one. You're the instigator. Yeah, yeah. The worst one Meg ever did is she made us do it was um, a Cholula like hot sauce yeah, roulette. We didn't get any money oh that. my god. And I lost, and I took Don't almost you... like twenty, and that was uh, yourself the yep. whole day. Well, here's the thing: is that that was a very um, that was an interesting day because I had just started dating somebody and it was the first time she was coming over to my house to spend the night. No, it wasn't. It was. Uh, Tyler, no. Remember this? Yep. Yeah. It, it was hard. Let me tell you about something. <laughs> Having, performing something like that with that on the back end, yeah. that was tough. <laughs> on the literal back end. Let me tell you something. So were yeah. you like in a constant state of clench? Yes, it was. It How was do my, you even relax? It was so relax. difficult because yeah. like I was time? shitting all day. Well, and and it wasn't even shitting, had, it was just... We had gone to lunch, you, me, and Meg, after that, we had gone to lunch, yeah. and we, like, we were sitting at lunch, and we were fine, and then, like, one by one, we were we just like, to the oh, God, <laughs> it's happening. It's hitting. Didn't you throw up on free play as well? Yep. Milk? Yep. One? Yeah, you, Milk. Oh, Milk. Oh, it was a that. gallon challenge. Oh, with Patrick? Yep. Woof. But that, that was the thing, is that, like, she didn't offer me any money, I just uh, did it. Yeah. I did so it the you, first you time for money. You the wrong person. I know, I did it for the first time, and I got $40. Yeah. You've been through the ringer, and now you're on a show where you could just drink alcohol. Hey, you know, I miss it, Talk though. about your problems. <laughs> 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 no, no one really does my bets anymore, though, especially in Achievement Hunter. I'm like, well, how much? And they're like, nope, no, no one's doing anything. Like, <laughs> <laughs> What's the most you've ever, I guess, lost? Or... I never bet more than 100. Oh, okay. I, I mean, I've thrown bet... out, like, ridiculous amounts. Yeah. But stuff person. that I don't expect the person to do, yeah. it's interesting to figure out. I don't know, like what someone's worth. Because usually it's like, oh, I wouldn't do that for 10 grand. And I'm thinking to myself, I'd do that for like 100 bucks. No, that's, <laughs> that's why I don't get about uh, MDB. It's like, a mil it's like, no, no, no. I have no shame or <laughs> regard for myself, zero self respect. So you'd say yes to everything? 1,000 bucks for almost damn near anything. 1,000 bucks is bucks? so, so much, much money. Especially because, I mean, when you that earn $1,000, you've you know, you like paid tax on it and stuff. Right. So it's like, this is my $1,000. I'm not going to no, rape no. shit. You get given $1,000. It's like, that's a shitload of money Free to just money. do anything with. Yeah, but yes. the scenarios on MDB are like life ruining. Yeah, they're pretty bad. They're yeah, pretty it's bad. not like you gotta eat this or gotta do that. It's yeah. like your arms are now baby T Rex arms. That'd be fun, <laughs> like though. that. Million dollars? Yeah. yeah. Like the big argument in it's it. It's not one I would say no to on that show, period. <laughs> Duly noted. We, why, why don't they have you? They should have you on. I don't wanna be on that show. I'm just kidding. Why not? I do. Because you'd just say yes to everything. I would say, yeah, it would be very boring. I would not. It would be like, yeah. I, I could easily come up with something that you wouldn't do. Let me, about let me, it. Let me stew on that. Yeah. Next Nate, time I'm on Always yeah. Open. There we go. Okay. Something. That's good tease. We'll just do our own MDB on this okay. show. Right? Yeah, let's fuck this 50 talk bucks. This show. <laughs> $50. $50, however. $50, the new one. That's great. You once bet me, like, just before we get to the next segment, you once bet me $5, because we were sitting in a, some living room waiting for a scene of Million Dollars but to, to film, and I had a bottle of water, and you're like, I'll give you $5 if you pour a cap of water into your cross right now. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> <laughs> and so I was like, okay. So I just went, shoot. And it's like that much water. Yeah. It's like, and I was like, this is difference. literally the easiest $5 I've ever made in my life. I've always really appreciated people just like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Why not? Money, that, you, did, uh, you did that with your P with Charles once, right? You like bet him to oh, put oh, people. Oh, Christ. That was syrup. actually the most. That was, I think that was 200 <laughs> and That I was think, so worth it, And though. I think I, I either video. owed him some money because I think I ran out of drink tokens and I just was making him get his drink, <laughs> so I actually owed him some of that. But uh, also, he was just doing really like a really nice job, and I was like, I, I wish I could pay him. Oh, I could do a stupid bet, so I made him <laughs> fill his jeans with syrup. I was <laughs> Which there for that. Made me look terrible. <laughs> but no, once it was again, funny. worth it. Absolutely, yeah, worth it. it was funny. A great video came out of it. I remember because I was in that room and I was just like, Charles, like. You're gonna have to go home and change. Like yep. this isn't like a little yep. inconvenience but to you. Charles is one of those people I love. He's just like, yeah. Yeah. Where's the syrup? You got it was more? So funny too because you guys are both, you know, so British. And it was like, yeah. oh, 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 it's coming through my jeans. It was just <laughs> oozing through, like through a mess. And I like, oh, I like how it also took like 
a nice second to yep. actually come through. Like, yeah. there was the anticipation. Yep. Oh, I love it. All right, before we move on, I want to thank Movement for sponsoring this episode of Always Open. This episode of Always Open is also brought to you by Movement Watches. We get it, holiday shopping can be tough, but thanks to Movement Watches, all that gift-giving anxiety can disappear with the press of a button. These watches make the perfect purchase for just about any uh, person in your life, guy or girl. And remember, they only start at $95. Movement watches start at just $95. At department stores, you're looking at $400 to $500. At such great prices, movement watches make wonderful holiday gifts to you. I had this one today. I like to change it up. It's got the gold band. Beautiful. Nice and shiny. Goes great with my outfit. I have what, like a gold one, a silver one, every color for whatever jewelry I want to wear. Isn't that fancy? Tyler agrees with me. You can't see him, but he's agreeing with me. <laughs> um, and they're great gifts. I mean, it's guys, girls, whatever. Um, dogs. Dogs. Your dogs would probably, could probably wear that as a, if they have like big wrists or little legs. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Lots of options. Um, you could get 15% off today with free shipping and free returns by going to movement.com slash open. Now is the time to step up your watch game. Go to mvmt.com slash open. Join the movement. They also have sunglasses. And I love their sunglasses. Uh, yeah. And it's bright all year round, so that makes a great holiday gift <laughs> as well. They're good for everybody except blind people. Sunglasses? No, uh, watches. <laughs> and sunglasses. No, sunglasses are great for blind people. Yeah, I, I was going to so, say. But not go-to. watches. They Get the sunglasses for the blind people in your life and watches for everyone else. Yep. There and what go. if they go beep beep on every hour, like the amount of, then it's fine for blind What do blind people need to know time for? <laughs> They don't, they don't, it's not, hey, night times, you know, daytime. <laughs> they it's have always, schedules too. <laughs> I'm sure they do, but it's, it's different. Well, like, what if they want to go and get food? And it's like, it's 4 a.m. You better know where those 24 diners are. <laughs> <laughs> we'll take that out. I support all blind. They're, well, they're not watching this are, anyways. They're they can listen, listen to, it. to it. That's right. We uh, respect everyone, the hearing impaired, the visually impaired, everyone. Despite what Tyler says. All right, let's move on to our next segment called Ask Us Anything. This question comes from Lauren W. And Lauren asks, are you easily able to forgive people? Yes. You are? Here's why. It's way more effort to hold a grudge. Mm. Mm. It's like, it's like you spend energy to maintain hatred. That's true. And it's way easier just to be like, that really pissed me off. Let me be annoyed for a little bit. Yeah. Uh, no, I'm fine. There has to be a level, though. There has to be, like, something that someone does where it's, like, unforgivable. Yeah. In that case, you just avoid them, though. Yeah. I guess. I feel like... Just cut them out of your life? Actively forcing yourself to hate someone just gives you a shitty day. Like, no, you'll just I be agree. in that mood of just, like... Yeah. There's you like, see their face, it's like, oh, I hate yeah. them. <laughs> <laughs> There's, like, a, a fake Gandhi quote. I mean, I don't think it's, like, Gandhi or Buddha. I think it's just, like, a fake quote that people quote as them. But it basically says something like, hating someone else is, like, drinking poison expect- and expecting the other person to die. Yeah. Um, oh, I've just, heard like, that quote. It's a good quote. Like, well, it's because they're not bothered by it. Right. It's you. That's yeah. Exactly. Right. That's yeah. the flip side is that you have to realize that no matter what, the anger and hate that you're sending towards them, they don't even think about you. Yeah, it's they, like they out also of their minds. can get enjoyment from it. Yeah, like yeah. If, exactly. If you know someone hates you, yeah, or like if someone knows you hate them, they might bloody love that. Yeah, and you're just feeding them. I point. don't know who said this quote. If we're gonna do some quotes, <laughs> is uh, but my mom tells me this all the time: is you got to kill them with kindness. Yeah, is that even if? Because oh, I, 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 I completely agree with everything you said. Like she came up with that to anything. Like yeah, you have to. You spend so much energy; it does nothing but ruin your own life. I wouldn't say I'm big enough to kill with kindness. I just I don't know. Indifference. Well, yeah, I think yeah. you're, you're, you take that mentality to like a lot of aspects of your life. And I think it's like a good thing to some extent of just like, can't be bothered. Yeah. And it's like, yeah, you shouldn't waste emotions yeah. with negative aspects. I only of have life. so much energy and time to give. It's like a finite amount. And it's yeah. like, if I'm forcing that on someone who I don't even like, I'm wasting it. It's a waste, even if totally I'm hating them. <laughs> yeah, totally it's like that. the more you learn from is that people are people and they're, gonna, they're irrational. You don't know why they do things. Don't try and figure it out. Don't yeah. spend any time yeah. worrying about it. It's a hard lesson it. to learn, though. It su- yeah, I mean, it sucks, but I mean, Jesus Christ, this is the way it goes. Well, it's like, we talked about this on a previous episode of, like, caring what other people think about you. And that's another one of things where it's like, you <clears throat> want this person to care about what you think of them, but they don't. And so you just have to be like, yeah. I'm spending more energy on this than this person is. Yeah. So It's crazy how humans work, that. because there could be a thousand people in a room. 
And if 999 of them love you, but that one person doesn't, that one person and they're vocal drive about you it. Fucking crazy! It's like, why don't you love me? That's like me. Else. That's me too. Because we can't accept all the love you have. <laughs> this is that one person that's yeah. gonna ruin your and life. And that person that becomes sense. like the most famous person in the room to you. Yes. Yeah. Like that's yeah. that one person. <clears throat> I so I'm good at forgiving people, but I also get very shaken in terms of like when my trust is broken. Yeah. So like if someone fucks with my trust. I, I'm very quick to forgive that person and like move on and keep them in my life, but I think I try to forget about what happened, but it ends up affecting me more than I like to admit. I'm just like, this happened, this person did this shitty thing to me, or shitty thing in general, and it kind of is always in the back of my mind. So it's like, I can forgive that person and still have them in my life, but it's always gonna affect like every <clears throat> interaction I have with them yeah. because of that one thing. Yeah, And that I think is, I don't know if it's a bad thing or a good thing or just like human nature, maybe. I think it, for me it depends on if the person is like actually willing to like own up to whatever. You yeah. Know? Um, and then it's like okay, like because I'm one of those forgive but can't forget people. Um, but if someone is it really forgiven at that point? No. That's see that's the debate. <laughs> <laughs> it's like you you forgive someone and, and you still like them, but if you're always kind Things of holding change, that ab right. yeah. above them, then it's like, yeah. is it really truly forgiveness? Say that person has wronged you. Okay. They never apologized, but they made a conscious effort to change or never do it again. Then yeah, that, that's, uh, that's the thing is that like, is there actual something coming out of this rather than like, okay, yeah, I forgive you for whatever you did, um, but you're just gonna continue like the same shitty behavior, then it's like, well, you're a piece well, of it's like, a person. I think the best example you could give is like uh, someone cheating on someone. Like, yeah, you might be able to forgive that person, but it's always gonna be in the back of your mind. Yeah. Of like, this person did this to me. Like, if they're texting someone, <clears throat> are they texting another person? Like, it's always gonna be, I think, a part of... Yeah, it just depends. I have a friend who, life. her um, significant other cheated on her, and it was, like, devastating, but she was like, I know I don't wanna be with anyone else. And so they, like, worked through it. And for me, it was just like, holy, I could never do that. Yeah. Well, that's, uh, uh, at least for <clears> me, I think, the more you move through life, you're trimming fat in your life. Mm. So if you have somebody that cheats on you, you should literally day one not even care afterwards because that person is not needed in your life. That person would fuck you over in some other way. Yeah, but well what if There's they got- There's no point in caring about that. What if that. they got way too drunk beyond decent decision making and it was just a factor of the alcohol? Yeah, I, I think that is kind of different. If we're talking about cheating, I think, uh, like for instance, like, you know, this is a pretty extreme example and this hasn't happened to me, but I would imagine this is how I'd react. If I walked into my girlfriend fucking another guy, I wouldn't be as upset if I walked in on her kissing another guy. I feel like an emotional connection is <laughs> way deep. Hold on, hold on. Emotional Sweet. connection. Both Gavin and I did one of these. Listen, listen. <laughs> what? No, because what you're what you're I'm trying to say is like go in. Right? No, no, it's, what I'm trying to say is like kind of like what you are. If it was a you know a, a lapse in judgment, alcohol induced mistake physically, I can understand that. But emotionally, texting. Love, feelings. Oh, I see what you're saying. Kind of cheating. I absolutely see what you're saying. That's so you way said worse. kissing is worse than sex. In yes, because kissing, I believe, like in, a, in a, an emotional kiss. What if they're, what if they're, what if they're <clears throat> having sex and they're making out? Oh, you, you know what I mean. I'm trying to say, but there's <laughs> right. emotional, One's physical. More of a... Emotional is more devastating. To me, than I think place would definitely come into it. Like if it was in my bed, right. that would Oof, be even if it was uh, drunk. Because because I, I feel like you can make bad decisions when you're drunk, careless decisions. Yes, but yeah. there are some like. Dark decision. Well, that's, like that's, doing it in, that's premeditated, right? Yeah. Like bringing somebody back to your bed. It, it happened to me yeah. where I got, I got cheated on, and they were very drunk. And this I is a, a long time ago, right? Yeah, this was like eight years ago. Yeah. It was. I forgave him, and I realized that I hadn't actually done it. Like I was like, oh, you know, we'll work through it. I'll forgive you and all that. We'll see how it goes because I was over here and she was in England. So yeah. It was, I was long distance. I was like, we'll figure out when we get back. And when we got back, it was just so different. And I was so awful. Like I just I realized I hadn't forgiven her at all. I just told myself and her that I had, and I was like, but everything she said like started annoying me, and I was like, yeah, why? Where's all my patience gone? It was because she, I don't know, damage. It's because you yeah. can't stop picturing that happening. I felt like I got over the physicality of it quite quickly. I was just like, well, not, maybe I was not more offended by the fact that I was only gone a little while, and it was like it was instant. Well, the fact that that happened so quickly after being gone that little amount of time, it means it probably either would have happened again or had already happened, maybe. Yeah. But like, if it only took that small amount of time for that person to do something like that to yeah. you, it, it's probably just in their character. It ended up with her breaking up with me just because I was just a ter terrible boyfriend <laughs> after that. It just oh, yeah, no good. it's kind of hard to like, and then you can always go back to be like, well, you cheated on me. Yeah. Like, well, yeah. Cool, you asshole. well, you cheated on me, yeah, so. Like, I felt like I could sense, never bring it up again though. Yeah. But in that sense, it's hard to forgive people. 
Yeah. Right? I feel like I'd be better at it now. It's still quite young eight years ago. Yeah. I'm not that young, but, you know, hadn't had much experience. I feel like I'd be pretty good at it now, at forgiveness. It's hard. That's a hard one. There's a, I have a, a story. This is probably what has thank spoiled you, my, you. my sense of, thank you, very much. For, thank you <laughs> for forgiving. Um, in like the fifth grade or so, I had a teacher who, um, like made fun of my handwriting oh, in, like, bitch. in front of the class, and it was like devastating to me. I like went home and I was like sobbed about it. I cried in class, and she went so far above and beyond to like apologize. She like wrote me a note and she like called my mom, and so I'm like, now everyone has to treat me that way. <laughs> if you want me, you better call my mom and say Aww. you're sorry. That's that sweet. could have been a, I don't know, maybe she was worried about getting fired though. Probably. She was a sweet lady. I think it, it was just like so. That has always been in my mind of like. How, when, you know, someone messes up, someone does something that they shouldn't or whatever, like, what are they actually doing to remedy it? Yeah. And I think it, because I think you can say, like, okay, this happened, I forgive you, but I think, it, like, it takes time to actually, like, process through and, like, see that someone else is. I just want to make sure you all know you're deserving of people being good to you. Thanks, Barb. And treating you with respect and love. And if people aren't doing that, then they could go fuck themselves. <laughs> the thing is, there's so many, okay. there's so many damn people. That if you're surrounded by shit ones, you can just find like better other ones. It you don't ever have though. to be. If like you work with them though, or like yeah. there's something you have to do, like you're you have to do that with them. You have and you have no choice. And some people aren't deserving of forgiveness, and then like I have you say you work with you, you just like <laughs> get out. <laughs> <laughs> and you just I mean there's you know it ain't nothing to cut that bitch off. I'm just trying to say that. Sure. You know. Then you so how many how many people would you guys say are dead to you? Like, oh. You've written them off. There's there's no forgiveness involved. Honestly, probably none. Zero. Yeah. yeah. I don't really have any. It might really be more anyone. vicious than that. Because, like, when I think about it, I'm very much like rip off a band aid, it never even happened type guy, like cut you out from existence. So I don't know if it's dead. It's just like you've never existed in my mind. Like erasing. It's pretty memories, similar to dead. Yeah. Kind of like going away from it. Like, I just got out of something you guys know yeah. that, like, no number, no email, no nothing, never talking to me again. If I saw her on wow. the street, I wouldn't even. It's whatever. Jesus. No anger, no hate, no sadness. It's just you just did off. not exist. Yeah. I guess that's the way I remedy it, and from time, because time does heal all wounds. It does. It's not a guarantee. Should be a disclaimer. It yeah. might not, but that's the only way it can. It is yeah. weird how how decent time is at healing stuff. It really yeah. is. Even the worst stuff. Yeah. And it's so hard to explain that to a lot of people. I'm just like, I know you're angry and upset right now yeah. about this, but honestly, t give yourself time. It's because there's no shortcut to time. Like when someone says, "Give it time," you're pissed off. It's like, fuck you. Yeah. yeah. I just want to be like at that point, but it's yeah. yeah. There's there's no worse feeling than having a friend who just got broken up with or cheated on because there's nothing you can do. Yeah. You can hold that person for like months, literally, <laughs> be there for them, and nothing's gonna happen. I think I'm, no amount of cards or love yeah. is going to change that situation how they feel. I am I'm definitely guilty of giving people the benefit of the doubt. <clears throat> and I think sometimes that's not the right thing. Of like, this person did something really shitty. Yeah. Um, like, you know, that's something that happened to me recently that was kind of shitty. And even I was just like, oh, like trying to make excuses for this person. And it's like, no, that's a really shitty thing and you shouldn't talk to that person anymore. Yeah. And it's like, I still am just like, they're probably not a bad person. And it's like, because you see a certain side to someone and then they do something shitty and you want to not believe that that's like them, even mm -hmm. though it probably is. And, and that's hilarious. why you got your friends to be like, mm. You also have Cut to remember out. Yeah. that everyone has bad days and make dumb decisions on bad days. True. Very true. All right. Well, let's do, we got two box of issue questions this week. Um, and I'll just say this now because we mentioned at the end of every show, but if you have a question for this box of issues, Email us, always open at rooster.com, and we'll uh, maybe pick yours. Or if you have a box of the box of issues. We've yeah. A lot this, of those. This is, a, I, this is the holiday one, I like to say, because yeah. it's very, it's very holiday esque. Festive. Someone made this for us. Lovely. All right. This one is submitted by a 27 year old male. And he writes I've been dating my girlfriend for almost four years. I overheard her talking to friends, wondering when I was going to propose. The problem is I have been looking for the right time to break up for a couple of months. <laughs> <laughs> Furthermore, we work on a 100 on a 130 foot private yacht which has been overseas for the past year. If we break up, we both lose our jobs. She just got a huge promotion and I am doing well myself. I can't help but think I am a terrible person for wasting her time. What should I do? Wait until we're back home in 6 months or do it quick like a band-aid? We share a tiny little room. There are also five other crew members who have their own rooms. Uh, very close living quarters. I'm confused as to how they would lose their jobs. I don't know why that's either. A, that is striking. Yeah, that's yeah. interesting. Because if, if without that factor, I'd have been like, yeah, just end it then. Like, are they a package deal? 
so they do something that only two people can <laughs> I do. Know, or may, may, I guess maybe it's a, well, I don't understand why both of them, I can see how let's, like let's, one of them. Let's take that factor out of there. Let's so, pretend like that wouldn't be the case. There, because that's there's a hard, levels in this, this yeah. thing right here. So I think the big problem is, is that they're on a yacht together for another six months and they share a room. Yes. So it's like, oh man. Also, I just want to point out that he signs this as the professional motorboater. <laughs> First of all, he's asking us what to do. How do I get your life? I want to work on a yacht. <laughs> right? like, what you, fucking, you, know what? you know what? If they get fired, you and I should take over. I would absolutely. We'll go and that. we'll go and That'd do the yacht job. So yacht they've been job. dating for four years. She is wondering when they're gonna mar get married. He wants to break up with her. They're on this boat for another six months. Essentially, like, yeah. yeah. What do you do with that? Uh, maybe write it out then. If it's only six months. You know. I mean, how much? Six months how, is a long time. Really? Did you really waste someone's life if you add six months to four years? You already wasted four years of their life. That's true. And then you're just making both of your experiences miserable for the next six months on that boat. Or just like... make the most of it. You know, just fucking grin and bear it. But I don't know. I've been, I, well, I haven't been in this exact situation, obviously, but I've been in a situation where, like, I stayed with someone way longer yeah, than me I should have. And... <laughs> Tyler, right? <laughs> yeah, my Tyler. favorite. Can you tell this story? Oh, this is my favorite the... fucking story. Sorry, all right, well. Fine, uh, okay, yeah, post -show. Uh, a quick, quick thing. Um, basically, I was dating someone for like two <laughs> years and couldn't figure out how to break up with her and knew about like six months into the relationship that we shouldn't be together. But um, we were both like nearing the end of like our college careers and like didn't really know what we were gonna be doing afterwards. So it was also kind of just like a security blanket. Well, like this is the one constant that I know I can have for a while. Um, then I just got to the point where I was just like, I can't. I can't do it anymore, like I can't stand it. So she started looking for jobs and she um, had a degree in like animals, I don't fucking know. Yeah. <laughs> um, but she always wanted to do something outdoorsy, you know, park range or whatever. So I was like, I'm gonna start helping you look for jobs. And so um, I literally found like an awesome, super cool like river guide in Alaska job for her. And I was like, you should look into this and you should just try it out and see how it goes. And she had been doing stuff like that here in Austin. And so she like applied, they immediately loved her because of course, um, and so she moved to Alaska. <laughs> Is that not savage? I'm gonna send you to Alaska. That is genius. Genius. Oh, that is amazing because sure everything worked out perfectly for She you. got a badass job. She fucking lived in Alaska. I got my freedom. You got her an awesome job. Yeah. And then you didn't have to have the awkward. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> and it was like, as she was, I remember as she was leaving, like her last day here in Austin, I was like going to a pool party with my friends and she was like driving back home to see her family before she fi finally moved and, um, and so we only saw each other for like two hours and she was just like, you know, like we, we have to figure out like maybe you can come come to Alaska. And I was like, yeah, 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 yeah. Just like, get the fuck out. My friend's having a pool party and I'm missing it. <laughs> oh my God. Such a I downer. Know. I know. But it, it just like looking back on that situation, it was tough because um, I, we didn't want to hurt, like I didn't want to hurt her. Yeah, totally. And I knew that like we were, we weren't in a good place to break up, but it was also like looking back and I was like, ah, I kind of wasted like a <clears throat> good amount of my life that I could have just. How much, how long were you with her? Oh, two years. But oh, wow. Did you know, was there like a fundamental problem or you just weren't into it? Like, it just, it just, what made you know that it, you weren't into it? I mean, there was a lot of things. Um, I just didn't think we were compatible. Mm. We just, she would just do, th this is also the same person that I kind of <laughs> talked about on the show that like threw me a scavenger hunt for my birthday and it was like the worst thing ever. Oh yeah, because ever, you it was like, hate that shit. Yeah, it, it wasn't, it wasn't an intimate thing between uh, like her and I. She was like, you have to go to this place and talk to this stranger who will have this card for you waiting. And then you have to Which call- Which knowing Meryl is like Yeah, I was like, I don't want to fucking talk to anyone. You don't like um, talking to people? I hate everyone. <laughs> Except for me. Interesting. Yeah. No, I don't like, I wouldn't, I don't like engage, like I'm a shy person. And so like one of the things on the scavenger hunt was like, all right, you're gonna go to um, this restaurant that you like and you have to ask the, the so-and-so for like, you know, whatever thing, and then she'll hand you the clue. And then uh, the worst part was that she involved my friends and all of my friends told her it was a bad idea. They're like, you clearly don't know her if you really yeah. think this is something she's gonna enjoy. Oh, the effort though. I know, the effort, so that was, effort. A, yeah, it was a lot of effort. Um, but there was times, there was like clues that I had to call my friends and every time I had to call my friend, they would just make fun of me relentlessly for like 10 minutes. Uh. And I was just like, just give me the fucking clue. <laughs> it's the best thing in the back of her head this whole time, she's like, I'm gonna send this bitch to <laughs> Yeah. I'm, gonna I'm just gonna fucking fuck ship her off. off. She's a great ice person. Ice. Yeah, she's, I hope she's doing well in, in, in Alaska or wherever she may be. But Maybe um, she wrote this quote. Maybe she's dating maybe she's, maybe she's on that boat. <laughs> anyway, so, yeah, back to that. Yeah. Um, this is a really shitty situation to me. Yeah. And it's like, as much as I 
don't necessarily agree that it's a great decision, I might say wait out the six months because it's hard, man. I think I would agree. I yeah. mean, it's, it's something worthy of a sitcom, which yeah. you got to appreciate that factor of it. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, it's a fun story to tell. Um, there is a there is an alternative. Uh, you could pull Natalie Wood. Uh, oh. Don't do that. Who and what is Natalie? Oh, Wood? <laughs> I know that went over like ninety five percent of our audience's head. What, That's is that a like terrible like, joke. Kill him. Do not kill her. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, wow. Like, shove her overboard. No. Y'all, y'all Google Natalie Wood. Don't, no murder. Uh, no don't underage do that. drinking. Don't do that. No, no. Yeah. <laughs> I say I say stick it out. Or make things interesting. Life is, you know, short. Break up with her. See what happens. Well, do you feel like a relationship was a waste if it does, if it doesn't end well? Like if you were with someone five years, it ended terribly. I, don't I wouldn't. Know. I wouldn't see that. I feel like a lot of a lot of women would see that as a waste because didn't get proposed to or have a kid or whatever. But I would have enjoyed that time. Like even if it ended badly. I it's think like, also you, you learn a lot from every relationship yeah. too. That's something yeah. right there. Life is just a series of lessons for future tests. It's also like learning what you like and don't like in a relationship too. Like that I've, I'm lucky where m most of my relationships have ended okay. Like yeah. not in a big blowout or like this huge fight or this one thing that happened which ended it all. And it's like still upsetting that it happened and like it does feel like oh like we spent X amount of years together for something that didn't work out and that sucks. Yeah. But you also learn like during that time, I learned that I really like when a guy is like this towards me, or I really don't like when this happens, and it's like that is very you important. You probably still have some fun memories if it totally if it ended badly. Great yeah. memories. I can imagine though, it is hard to be like, oh shit, that's six years of my life that I could have been with someone who did want to yeah. end up with me. But you, know? you also but can't you live with know. regret, right? And I think if you both are stuck on this boat for another six months, <laughs> maybe like don't be overly. Fake about it, like don't make her think you're about to propose. Hey, don't, obviously, don't go overboard with it. <laughs> <laughs> it was good. I don't know. But then I, I mean, I, I, we're keep talking about his perspective, but like I can imagine that girl if she's like, oh, this is the next step. We're gonna get here, and then, you know, he's like, I don't want to be doing. I don't know. What would you? What would you? Would you want really want someone to be with you another six months if you knew they weren't in it? Anymore? I guess that is also a kind of feeling because I've I've been in relationships where the person has checked out and it's like well like that one time worse. I sent you to Alaska you know and then yeah you came back and, oh, and I loved it there <laughs> and I met so many I don't know if she there. knows though I mean she might not know and for the guy just yeah, do the old still, excuse like I just I'm tired honey I'm yeah, just, yeah, checked out of a relationship someone, someone is checked out and like you could send like I have been checked out of relationships and I've been with people who've been checked out and it's not a great it feeling. looks like it's gonna end badly so you have to pick the severity. Of how yeah. bad you could break up. That's gonna suck ass. You're both gonna lose your jobs. And you're uh, living together you're on that boat. You're living together. It's terrible. Whatever's going Fake on. Fake it. Check out. It's gonna be <laughs> the pain's not gonna be as bad because you could be like, look, I was thinking about, I was considering your job, your you know livelihood. Well, it also sounds like she's not expecting it at all. Like right. She's so she has no idea. Those. So just keep faking so it, dude. It might be. A, it might honestly like, be a good time to start trickling off and like. No, park at park in Alaska, <laughs> drop a ride. I say like go, thing. if it's only six months, which I would say is the maximum amount of time to string something out, yeah. Yeah. I reckon go all in. Be like super into it, yep. super excited. Oh, no. yeah. Ride it all the way home, see you later at the yeah. end. Yeah. Nope. Cause at least that way. Don't do that. <laughs> nope. Yes, I think you should. At That's, least that way, yeah. you might end up having such a damn good time that it works out. Maybe, maybe, maybe they'll maybe fall madly kidding. in love. Or it's like, uh, here's looking at you kid, yeah. later. Yeah. Or. Pretend that you're all in, and then fake your own death. There you go. <laughs> Natalie Wood, you're Natalie going to, Wood. Go into a witness protection she program. She died, though. There wasn't fake. No. Oh. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Right. It's just such well, a, it's such a tough, there's, like, no answer to it. There's no There's no right answer, yeah. But we could all just give our opinions and... What a predicament. It's an yeah. amazing predicament. It's insane. You've got to be impressed by it. Yeah. I, but, yeah, I would say stick it out. Stick it out. Stick it out. All in. <laughs> all in. Oh, I don't know. Break up. She'll it's just such quiet. a tough. It's a it's, it's a hard one. Yeah, that that, uh, sure. that that's another thing. Like, if it was just like if it was like for some for some reason why this relationship is, you know, re relies on their employment, then I would say like stick it out. But yeah. if for whatever reason you can get away with breaking up <clears throat> and not worrying about having your job. I guess maybe because it, it would like ruin the dynamic. I don't know. It That's depends what's thing, important but... to you in this situation. Yeah, I your job or got a fucking job at a yacht. I don't know. <laughs> That's all I care. I don't or give like a shit a, about like the a rest. Or like a cruise ship, maybe. But, yeah, you get a job a, on hold a cruise. On. I, I know cruise people who's, who work on cruise ships, and I'm not trying to disparage them. There's a big difference between cruise ship people and yacht people. <laughs> what's the difference? The pay. There's a lot. Oh, okay. 
I don't know anyone who works on a yacht. Oh, I, I know I know some people that work on cruises, and there's it's just an interesting life. <laughs> a lot of fucking. Ramp it with it, is it, is it like a, Ramp it. Is it like carny folk? You know? it, yes, like that's a good. People. It's carny folk. Oh. On water. I don't want to like name a state, but like Alabama, Arkansas. Oh. Uh, maybe it's you know that Carnival Cruise. I've been on Carnival hey, Cruise. So that, I had my first kiss on a Carnival. You cruise. went on a cruise? Yeah. When I was a kid, I went on two. I went on the Disney cruise when I was young, and oh, then I went on the fuck. Carnival oh. cruise when I was 15 and had my first kiss on the front of the boat. That's what we, can you say Connie's? You can say Carnies. I think so. Can you say Carnies? Yeah, I think so. I, I Let me mean, tell you something we've just about said Carnies. It eight small times. hands. <laughs> small like cabbage. Yes. Yeah, small like cabbage. Awesome powers? No. Dumb and awesome powers. It is awesome. I mean, powers. I know we're trying to grow our audience, Colonies. but Carnies aren't watching this. They don't have laptops. <laughs> it sounds so offensive. You know what? It sounds so offensive. You know what Carnies do have? What do they have? Underwear. Ooh. Well, maybe. <laughs> if they don't, guess where they could get some? Me undies. Beautiful. A terrible transition. Every year, millions of people receive the least liked gift of all time underwear. But we still give it to our family and our loved ones who just don't want it. Maybe it's not that underwear is the problem, it's the kind of underwear. Let me tell you about me undies, my friends. They o the only underwear that makes for an amazing gift. I'm wearing me undies today. I wear it almost every day. There's different uh, styles, especially like lots for women. There's thongs and the, what's it, what's it called? The little uh, boy shorts. Boy shorts. Like those two. Um, tons of different styles and everything like that. You can find the perfect one for yourself or your loved ones. Um, me Undies uh, made underwear the perfect gift that everyone is going to love you for. It's a goddamn holiday miracle. That's the actual written copy that they have on there. I love it. Yep. Uh, this year, don't give underwear, give me undies. This holiday season, to get your exclusive 20% off the softest underwear and socks you will ever <coughs> wear, free shipping, and 100% satisfaction guarantee, go to meundies.com slash open. That's meundies.com slash open today. Go get some undies. Um, you'll look fabulous in and out of them. Wink. Mostly in them. Keep them on. That's all I wear. Be a never nude. Ooh. Shower in your meundies. Yep. Ooh, they should make some denim meundies for that. Cause that's a, that's what he wears, right? Never yeah. nudes. Yeah. Yeah. He's he's um in rest development. Yeah. Um, oh oh um. Tobias Funke. Tobias Funke. Yeah. He's a never nude, but he's always has these like tiny pair of denim shorts on. Got Maybe they could make denim um denim print. Yep. Yeah, that's what the carnies would like. <laughs> Just bring it. Get around. on it, meundies. <laughs> <laughs> Get to that carny crap. All right, let's do let's do another. So we get a lot of these, so we're gonna do the show. This is our second one. I know, I just picked some more in there. <laughs> uh, so many. So this one comes from someone named Jack T, and Jack writes. Jack Tapilla. <laughs> Jack Tapilla. <laughs> Jack writes, "Hi guys. So I've been with this girl for just over a year, and I really love her, and I think she's the one for me, and I'd love to spend the rest of my life with her, but." I'm joining the RAF next year, which is the English version of the Air Force. Royal Air Force. Royal Air Force. Uh, which means I'm going to be away a lot for long periods of time. So I was thinking of breaking up with her just because I don't want to slowly break her heart over the course of several years. She's still got the rest of her <laughs> life to live, to go out to places, meet people, get into relationships. I don't want her sat about worrying and waiting months at a time for me to come home. Please help. What should I do? Also, this is so clearly so, written by so, someone yeah. who's English. I kind of want him to read that. <laughs> Sat about. Sat about. <laughs> I so, feel like I'm not even suited to answer that. I've never been in the military. Yeah. But I assume, I mean, so many people just wait for their partners to come back, right? Well, they've only been dating for a year, just over a year. He wants to how spend his life with her. He didn't say. He didn't say. I am at, well, how old are you when you joined the Air Force? I mean, I, could, I guess it'd be, be any 18. age. Yeah. At least also, 18. Also, the Royal Air Force is so much cooler than like just U.S. Air Force. Yeah, they got a movie called Top Gun? Didn't think so. Listen, looks like this guy <laughs> has kind of planned all this out. Because he's uh, line one, you know, I want to spend the rest of my life with her. Uh -huh. Line two, I hope she has a wonderful life. It kind of seems like he's already like he written seems his very, fates. He's trying to think a lot about being selfless, selfless. in a situation. Yeah. But yeah. Good, good man to have in the military, for sure. Absolutely. But yeah. Seems like a stand-up gent, yeah. that Jack Tapillo. <laughs> I mean, even... <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, a lot of people do it. A yeah. lot of people go away for years and come back. I, I'm i kind of split on this. I Yeah, I, I feel like if you know at this point how much you love this person and if <clears throat> both of you have already expressed wanting to spend your life with each other, then just try it out. You know, like, go off and do the RAF. And see how it goes if it's if it's too tough and you maybe need to take a break from each other and 
let her be single for a while, then yeah, I, I wouldn't. I say there's no need to be preemptive about it. Yeah, yeah. If it doesn't work out, it just didn't. But at least you tried, and it might work out. Yeah, it's not like and if you want to fucking yacht. Yeah, you're not like sharing a room with her. <laughs> it's also not the rest of your life. Yeah. That's for a couple years. I'm. A, mm. Well, it's a lot. Of I years. well, I just I I don't know. I'm a different cat. I'm a romantic nihilist, so none of this matters. But. Like your life is what I'm saying to this person. Your life doesn't matter. No, nothing matters. Yeah, However, but it does I, to you. No, it does. So, like, what I would say is, like, you know, everybody has at least in uh, their mind. Or I would imagine most people. I don't want to generalize that. There's like the one. I right. think there's millions of the one for you. I don't think there's just one person on the planet out of billions that can fit that role. Well, I that's there's the many danger. People that can. So, if you're on the fence about this. Go experience your life. Go be in the military. Give that everything you got, because we all know, like, when you have somebody, you know, back home, uh, you're doing long distance, it's always in the back of your mind. Of, she like, could be the one that got away, though. And yeah. that I mean, he's, really... he's saying, like, he's <clears throat> doing this for her, it seems like, not so much for him, because he's already said, like, I want to be with this person, but I don't want her to, like, have to stay up and, you know, wait. Yeah, but he says he... I, think it's, I think it's also, like, like Gavin said, you shouldn't be preemptive about it. You should just live your life and then if it comes to the point where it's like all right you're this is too tough like we don't have to be together anymore there's also other options if if you want to be with someone but also don't want to hold them back there's open relationships that's true those exist people have those and it works out sometimes not always not for everybody but just being in a relationship with someone but also having freedom to, yeah. if you want to meet people or experience other people sexually or romantically you have that freedom but you still know that other person's always there yeah could be an through, option. Go with your gut on this one, right? Like yeah, said, I, like just... I think if you like this person this much, I would say stay in the relationship and try it out. Like, go off and, and do the the Air Force thing, and if it is too hard to maintain, then... There's not a deadline on it, like six yeah. months, you know? <clears throat> there really isn't, so just... <laughs> like the yacht. Like the yacht. <laughs> Still, my mind is reeling with that one. There's just so... I'm you want to circle back on that one? <laughs> so fucking bad. No. Wasn't, uh, was Prince Harry in the Royal Air Force, or what was he in? Was he in... He was just in the army. Just in the army. He went to Iraq. No, he's see. Then you could maybe meet Meghan Markle. Be a girl who carries a deal or no deal case. Hey. Oh, it's a true love story. I th I thought that was a lie. No, it's a hundred. No. She's true. actually a deal or no deal. Yeah, model. she's a deal or no yeah. deal. deal. You're the expert on all things British, <laughs> right? What's that got to do with deal or no deal? <laughs> was there a deal or no deal, UK? Yeah. No, no, she's American. Yeah, but she's American. she's American. She's American. American? She's a, oh my god! I haven't. I didn't read. Well, it. I guess you're Canadian, so you like. Stuff. She. I watched a great video that she did about how she changed some advert. Oh yeah, the like the washing or the yeah like the something dish washing. Kind of sexist ad, and she wrote to Hillary Clinton when she was a kid. When she was 11. Yeah. She seems like a cool. This she's, is. She seems sound. Yeah, she seems awesome. Yeah. I would hope so. She like. Prince Harry also, is like one of the most eligible, well, was one of the most eligible bachelors. What a turnaround for that guy. He's a handsome devil now. Right. He was a little, you know, rebel back in the day. I like where, didn't I like. He get, didn't he get his knob out in Vegas or something? Yeah, yeah he, he was a party boy, but look, look at where he is. I like a reformed sinner. That was my favorite. I really like the uh, lowest generation royal family. I guess they're not the lowest. They will have kids now, but. Yeah. yeah. I don't know, yeah. man. It's, such a, it's like the princess story dream, you know? She's like a half black, half white girl from United States she who was a, model on deal was a no deal, deal. No, no deal model and now she's fucking gonna be British royalty. I saw a bunch of posts about the fear that their kids could technically be American and run for president. Oh. And then we would have both Shh, countries. That's what we're trying. Oh. Yeah, I'd be down for that, honestly. Yeah. <laughs> I trust <laughs> these people, down. yeah, and their offspring it's to run. It's a slow countries. move to take it back. Yep. Yeah. That's right. I'm down. I'll well, fight for the UK. <laughs> thank you guys for joining me on this episode of Always Open. Yeah, Gavin, Tyler, hard. Merle. As always. Thanks for having me. Of course, we're going to be doing a, a, camera on him. another question on the post show. So if you're a first member, feel free to check it out. If you're not a first member, sign up and hopefully we'll see you there. If you have a question for us on the post show, um, you can email alwaysopen at rootsteeth.com or the main show as well. We take your questions for all the things and your feedback. Um, so yeah, thanks for watching. Guys, cheers. Cheers, cheers guys. Tyler, don't cheers us because you don't have anything. You just love you. Huzzah. Bye. You tainted us. <laughs>